I think life lesson numero uno is surround yourself with nothing but the best people, whether it's friends, whether it's business partners, whoever you let allow into your life better be of the highest quality individual because it's going to add that much more to your life, obviously. Welcome, everybody, to the Chris Harder Show, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success, knowing that when good people like you make good money, they can then do great things. My name is Chris Harder, and several times per week, I will bring you epic guests, solo episodes, and every single tool, trick, and skill set you need to grow your business, grow your money mindset, and to grow your wealth to levels that you have never reached before. I've ended up in a unique place in life where I've got the experience, the connections, and all of the secrets that it takes to be successful. And and I'm lifting the curtain to reveal it all to you in an effort to help put you in a position of abundance so great that you can then be as generous as possible. So let's lock arms and let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Chris Harder Show, where today I am grateful for music. If you guys know me, you'll know that I love music. I've got it on at the house all day. It's in the background all the time. But what made me grateful for it today was I just flew into Vegas and popped the earbuds in and was just like listening to some of my favorite songs while I looked at the sun kind of setting out the airplane window. And the whole thing was just a vibe and music makes everything better. And if you're like, what in the hell is this guy talking about? I start all of my episodes with what I'm grateful for. Random things I'm grateful for because I truly believe that if you want to be abundant, then first you have to acknowledge the abundance that you already have. I mean, think about it. If you don't stop and take inventory for the things you have that you once prayed for, that you once wished you had, well, then why would you even get any more if you're not already appreciative for what you have? So that's why I kick off every show with something I'm grateful for to help inspire you to do the exact same thing. Now, this next episode is really cool because it's one of the episodes that was extracted from when I sit down and do 20 questions with my friend, Danny Hafelman. He sits down, he studies my brand, he's been a friend for a while now, and he asks me questions that he thinks you guys would want answers to. And in this series, he asks me why I'm so happy. I'm a really, really happy person at the core, but it doesn't come easy. It's not like my regular default. It comes from perspective, some stories I'll share about perspective with you, some very personal stories. It comes from building that muscle. It comes from a happiness and gratitude practice that I start my day with. And it definitely comes from the type of people that I allow into my life. And I even do a little deep dive into what I expect out of the people who I involve in my life. So I think you're really gonna like this episode, especially if you struggle with happiness or especially if you just want to wake up every day or operate every day as a much more positive, much happier person. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, there are now two spots left. Two seats left at the dinner series. Starts in just two weeks, February 1st, Scottsdale, Arizona. And everybody you wish that you could meet is gonna be in that room ready to collaborate with you because we cause those accidental collisions to create the collaborations. We've built exercises to do just that. And it's like the best half a day you could possibly spend that leads into the best, most elegant dinner you could possibly bond with, with over people. So go to chrisarder.me forward slash dinner, check it out and grab one of those last two seats. Not even playing. It actually gets you an invitation to all three days with all three dinners throughout the year. Hit pause, go to chrisarder.me forward slash dinner. Again, that's chrisharder.me forward slash dinner, and then come right back to this episode so that you can learn why I am always so damn happy. As we are out here on this rainy day, let's talk about why you are so freaking happy. What do you think that is about you? Is that always how you've been? It's funny. I, I think I'm happy for two big reasons. The first one is I work at it. I literally want to be a happy individual. So the little things, the mantras when I wake up, the practices, really building a perspective of seeing the positive in something instead of the negative in something, that's all been a work in progress and is intentional and everybody has to choose to build that muscle. But then the second half of why I'm so happy, I think comes from two individuals. The first one is my father. You know, my dad, he would 
go out of his way to build something for you, to fix something for you, to snow blow the neighbor's driveway, to mow the neighbor's yard. And when you'd ask him, hey, dad, why do you do all these things and, and do it with such a good attitude? And you never seem tired and you never complain. Matter of fact, I never, ever, ever heard my dad complain. I would ask him these things and he'd say, that's what we do. And this became his famous phrase was, that's what we do. And he would say it just like that. And that perspective of contribution to other people that I saw him live and how happy that made him to contribute to other people, that really stuck with me. I mean, right from the moment when he would wake up in the morning, he'd wake up and he'd be excited and I'd come down and he'd already have the coffee on and, and he'd, my dad was in the morning, he'd always listen to an action movie, he'd have headphones on, we came down, so he'd be like, dad, dad, you know, good morning. And uh, he did things that made him happy to start his day, just like I do now. But then he did things that made him happy as he continued his day by contributing to other people. And uh, so watching him and watching that example is one of the big reasons why I'm so happy. There's a second individual, though, in life that had something to do with me being happy. His name was Mark Spiker. And Mark was my boss off and on when I was in banking. And quite honestly, while he was my boss most of the time, he would annoy me and he would annoy you know, some of the other people that worked for him. But now, looking back, here's why he annoyed everybody. He was so optimistic, it didn't feel realistic sometimes. He was so positive that you just wanted him to be down to earth and struggle with you for a moment. But he wouldn't let that ever be the case. He would be positive in any headwind. He would be positive in any challenge. You could be minutes from a goal that you didn't have a chance of hitting. And he would be positive right down to the moment where you did not hit the goal. But he'd be positive that you'd be have a chance at hitting it. And that obviously seeped into my DNA and that rubbed off. But now here's when it really rubbed off. Mark, unfortunately, was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer out of the blue at the age of 40 years old. And from the time he told me to the time he was gone was about a month. And when he died, I went to his funeral. And I remember thinking this one thing as I stood there. I thought, my God. This guy was so happy and he was so positive, no matter what was happening in his day, that he lived a life of more happiness, even though he only got 40 years, than anybody else who lives to be 80, 90, or 100. Because he made, he chose, he saw that many optimistic moments. He saw and chose that many happy moments, no matter what he was facing. And that really sank in with me. I wanted, no matter how long I lived, to make sure I had as many positive, optimistic moments as possible in life. And then as I developed that personality, as I developed this muscle, a strange thing started to happen. An optimistic person just ends up with more opportunity because they're optimistic that somewhere in the mess there is opportunity. A happy person simply ends up with more success because people want to hitch their wagon to, they want to partner with, they want to buy from, they want to learn from, they want to support somebody who is just naturally more happy. So the side effect of building this muscle, the side effect of having this personality is that it has contributed a lot towards our success, not just financial success, but impact on the world, opportunities that we've had, and being able to provide for, you know, not just our immediate family, but our extended family. I super appreciate that story because you, it's sad to hear those stories. Yeah. But it's such a big deal to have those reminders that like you don't know when someone's time is going to come. Yeah. And like if someone pops in your head, just send them a text because you might not get that shot. Like you don't know what's going on on the yeah. other end of that. When you go through this and like you, you think about what has helped you keep this, you know, optimism and positivity. Do you ever consciously think about not coming across as like toxic positivity? Like, how do you balance just being no, a real not human? At all. You know what? When I see people talk about toxic positivity and this, I instantly reject it. Listen, if at the end of my life, somebody said he was so positive, he was toxic. He was so happy. He was toxic. Boy, he was so just upbeat that he made me feel bad about myself. Listen, that's a you thing, not a me thing. I will be the brightest light. I will be the most optimistic person. I will be the person that says, I understand there's 50 ways where this may not happen, but here's the one way that it could happen. I will be that example for anybody who needs it. And I have a hunch those that 
latch onto that example are going to do better in life and be happier at the end than those who don't and resist it. I think you're right on that one. How do you think having good friends has helped you be that? Because I know like you not only surround yourself with business people, but just good friends in general. How has that impacted you? I think life lesson numero uno is surround yourself with nothing but the best people, whether it's friends, whether it's business partners, whoever you let allow into your life better be of the highest quality individual because it's going to add that much more to your life, obviously. But having good friends, that changes everything. To have good friends means you got people that you can count on. To have good friends means, you know, even when you're not naturally feeling happy, you're naturally feeling up, you know, you have people you can turn to. To have good friends means no matter what tough thing you're going through that you're embarrassed to talk about, you know that you have somebody that you can bring it up to and and have a good sounding board. To have good friends means you're going to have good times and good memories in life. We have a mutual friend, Kyle, one of my favorite human beings on this planet, one of my, my best friends out there. He is somebody that adds experience and adventure to my life through the trips that he books and curates. Another friend does that for me, Rob Murgatroy, one of my best friends on the planet. He curates once in a lifetime European trips that I wouldn't otherwise uh, be able to go on and opportunities to meet people that I wouldn't otherwise meet. You, Danny, have become a very good friend. You're somebody who I enjoy both mentoring, but at the same time, being around and learning from. I just think stacking good people in your life is a great policy and intention to have. And you can't expect any one person to be everything for you. This is where people get it wrong, I think. They expect a good friend to be the one person who's going to cover every single need they ever have. Well, just like in a relationship or in a marriage, that's an unrealistic expectation. Nobody can check all the boxes. So collect friends, collect good people, collect some of them because they may inspire you to have better fashion, collect some of them because they may inspire you to give more, collect some of them because they may inspire you to get more out of life or travel when you wouldn't otherwise do it. Collect good friends and good people like it is your most prized collection. And I think you're going to live a really rich life. I love that. And I appreciate that very much. You do such a good job of being on this. Like we just, we say the mantras, we have the optimism in our life and we try to see the good in all the things. How important is the polarity and understanding the polarity in that though? Polarity is important. It's, it's funny. I just sent out an email. I've started writing emails once a week that literally just come from my heart, right? So they don't teach business. They don't do it. Whatever I feel like talking about, they just come out of me. And I wrote an email in the last couple of weeks on polarity and that nothing exists without polarity. And for those of you that don't know what I mean, polarity simply means the opposite of what is. So you cannot have light without its polarity of dark. You cannot experience happy without the polarity of unhappy. You cannot experience rich without knowing what feeling poor is. These are all examples of any one thing that you desire is truly valueless. You cannot define it. You cannot feel it. It is not tangible without its opposite existing. So if you want wins, to feel the win means that you had to have losses so you know what a win feels like. To have joy, you have to know what sadness is in order to define joy and know what it is when you're feeling it. If all you ever had was happiness and nothing else, if all you ever had was success and nothing else, if all you ever had was joy and nothing else, that would become your new baseline experience. And without anything to define it against, joy would actually be quite unjoyful. Happy would actually become quite unhappy. So you need polarity in everything in life that you value. You need its opposite for it truly to exist. Now, this will help you on your business journey. This will help you in your relationships. Without having struggle with Lori, we wouldn't enjoy when we win together. Without having fights and unhappy moments, we wouldn't treasure the happy, blissful moments when we were just having the best day ever. Without having unhealthy, I wouldn't appreciate healthy. Without having loss, I wouldn't appreciate every little moment where I have people who are with me today. When my dad died unexpectedly in 2020, it really woke me up to the fact that time is limited and we're not guaranteed tomorrow. And you can make more money, but you can't make more time. 
And I think when you really let those things sink in, when you really live those things, and when we're young and we're full of youth, we think we're going to last forever and we're going to live forever. And you don't treasure those things. You might be aware of them, but you don't treasure them. But when something happens in life to make you make you fully aware of those, make you truly live those principles, then suddenly every moment that you have with somebody, every joy that you have in life, every win, whether it's big or small, suddenly tastes that much sweeter because you know that it's polarity exists. You know that one day it won't be around. You know that one day while you're having a happy day, you will also be having an unhappy day. And that awareness allows you to treasure and appreciate and take inventory of the win, of the happiness, of the joy, of the love, of whatever pinnacle experience you're having right now. I truly believe that we live in a world that is becoming more divided and more toxic and more negative. And people are quick to point out all the things that are wrong. If you can be the person that develops the muscle that allows you to see what's right, then you will be the bright beacon of light that other people will see in a sea of darkness. You'll be the flashlight in a dark hallway. You will be the the bright spotlight or the lighthouse in a dark sea. And you'll be the person that everyone will turn to and focus on for guidance. Be the bright light. Be the person that sees what can be when everybody else is seeing what's wrong. Love that. I can cut it if you don't want it. But I mean, a real question I have for you with that is like, are you someone who just like, I don't listen to the news? Like, how do you balance being aware and quote, being prepared with not just listening to the doom and gloom of the world? I have awareness, but not obsession. This is the difference. Awareness is when I open my browser, I see news, I see headlines. And if there's something that looks important, I'll click on it, but I'll also click on it knowing it was probably written with bias. So I will look at it in a very objective way, but then I will not go seek it out. I will not obsess over it. I will not turn on 24 hour news. I won't do any of those things. I have awareness, not obsession. We only have just so much time in each day. We only have just so much time in life. And the world's going to do what the world's going to do with or without you obsessing over it. And during every rainstorm, as we sit outside here and it's raining right now, there's also a bright sky above if you go high enough and seek it out, right? You ever take off in an airplane, it's a a cloudy, rainy day, and you finally punch above the clouds and you're like, oh my God, it's bright and sunny up here every single day. I really believe that in a world where there's a lot of darkness, you're going to get what you look for. When we were raised as kids, we were always told, careful what you look for, you might just get it. Well, that goes for awareness of what's going on around you, awareness of what the challenges are, not sticking your head in the sand, but not obsessing on the headwinds, but instead turning your boat to make them tailwinds. Because with every challenge out there is a brand new opportunity created. With every problem people are talking about is a solution that's needed. With everything that's wrong right now, they need somebody to change it and make it right. That screams opportunity. So the awareness of what's going on in the world should not be what holds you back, but instead should be what clues you into what problems you can solve in order to help other people and therefore live an extraordinary life after you do. Last question on this. How do you define happiness for you? Happiness for me is choice. The complete and utter choice of where I want to be, who I want to be with, when I want to do whatever it is that I am doing, and to not have to do any of those things out of obligation. When you live a life out of obligation, and I don't just mean financial obligation, you know, maybe you're friends with someone just because you always have been. Maybe you stay in a relationship just because, well, you think it's the right thing to do. When you live a life out of obligation instead of a life out of true and honest choice, you will end up unhappy. So I think the best thing that money can buy, I think the best thing that awareness can buy, I think the best thing that self-development can provide for you is the power of true, unfiltered choice. And that's what will bring you happiness. Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. 
it would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success. Thank you.